Oh, hey guys, what's up? Uh, sorry, I was just writing a review for this brand new movie. And today, we got a brand new video. Today, we are going to listen to... Uh, what are we gonna listen to? We're gonna go through uh, Travis Scott's Astro World because I wanted to and I felt like it. So, got my review. I am ready and I cannot wait for you guys to hear this. I will go track by track. Give me my thoughts at the end. If you guys could like, subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, let's go. Today, I will be going through Astro World and I will give me my thoughts. Um. Besides the album, I'm going to be going through his Netflix documentary, Look, Mom, I Can Fly, and, of course, his Fortnite concert, which was huge for him. Uh, there's a bunch here, and uh, let's get into our first song, Stargazing. <laughs> a breezy and psychedelic sound for Stargazing, the first track on Astroworld, and it is my personal favorite. Now, uh, with good production on a lot of these songs, um... The vocals and sound on this track make it feel like a Travis Scott song because he has that psychedelic um, kind of vibe to his music. And I actually really enjoyed that in the song. Um, it keeps that standard rap. In the first like three minutes, it's more like a chill lo-fi kind of rap music, maybe a little R&B with some techno stuff. But uh, besides that, um, yeah, this first, the song is good. And the first three minutes are cool because of if you listen with two ears you can spot some things that the first one ear, uh, ear can hear than the other which i think is really cool and um yeah and some of the auto tune is uh, a little annoying at times but that's pretty much it now that's only the first three minutes we still have a minute left let's talk about that so uh yeah this is the same song uh, the last minute and a half of Stargazing is a epic, um, synth and bass based, um, bass based. <laughs> uh, it is that based, um, rap, actually, and he throws down a few great bars here, connects to the story of the album, like, and, it ain't a mosh pit, it ain't no injuries. I got him. Stage diving out the nose, please. Yeah, this right here is astronomical. I see you picked up all my ways, I feel responsible. I feel like this song could have worked as its own track if it added more, but I really do like the addition to this ending because I really did enjoy the first, but then the ending. One of my favorite uh, endings of, uh, probably the best ending of a song on this record. And this is a good idea of uh, lyricism because he has some good lyrics in the song also like i just heard and um i think i know that like it, his lyricism was criticized in uh birds of the tribe sing night which was his last record and um yeah here there's a uh, good songwriting i like it yeah okay now let's get into our second song here so featuring frank ocean what's the crack you already know who it is your boy big talk sorry uh, I like this song. I never really enjoyed it as much as others, but then re-listening to it for this video, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, the production is pretty good. Uh, I, I, Frank Ocean stuff on this is pretty good. I like how he clashes with Travis's style, and, um, it's a good, it's a good track. Uh, got some good production, good lyricism. Um, uh, yeah, but if you listen to it, there's a, uh, talking in the beginning for the first 30 seconds or so. And that is Big Tuck, as you can hear. He is a, a Houston rapper, uh, producer. And, uh, Travis is from Houston. So, um, yeah. And, uh, this is the first time a Houston rapper or producer will show on a song, but not on the future list. It's just in the song, or writing the song, or whatever. Uh, this song doesn't stand out a bunch, but it is a good one. I really do enjoy this song. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the next song has another Houston rapper, and that song is... Do I really have to talk about this song that much? Uh, I think everyone has heard this song already, watching this video. Uh, Sicko Mode is amazing. I really love Sicko Mode, and I know it's annoying now, it's a meme or whatever. I still like the song, I just don't enjoy it as much as I did. Now, uh, the collaboration with Drake and Sway Lee, Big Hawk, which is a producer and a writer of this song... Uh, yeah, they do great on this. Production's cool, beat's awesome, splits up into three sections that I'm gonna get into. But, um, the song is just over five minutes long, packs a ton into that runtime. 
But let's go into those three stages I stated. Um, Astroworld, the first one is Astroworld is back. Travis is the headmaster. He is the creator of Astroworld. And he is back, reclaiming his throne, ready to get everything in business. But the second part is uh, he just gets over anxious about all these people and all these things that are happening and he gets reminded of what used to happen and now drake is here i guess and i guess sway lee said someone said yeah sure okay also drake wants to ride the bus to a dance in high school i used to bus it to the dance yeah, yeah but um yeah thing about it i guess uh, the whole song is uh the whole song is me the meaning is travis is in a different place mentally and he needs to get out of it he's trying to get out and um yeah that's pretty much what sicko moon is about um okay um let me do an analysis uh, analysis of this track and um yeah here we go I love this album, and I especially love this track, and uh, I, at least some of them. I like the tracks and stuff, and the production is great sometimes. Here on Sicko Mode, the production's awesome. It's probably the best production on this record, and uh, there's a good sound. Uh, Drake has some pretty good bars in this one, too, except for, like, oh, yeah. I like the beginning. I like the wahs, and yeah, but... I do enjoy the songwriting. I think it's definitely not as might be a little better, especially in that last part, like last minute of the song. It's better than Stargazing, definitely. But um, I really enjoy most of it. There are some little problems here and there, but um, yeah, not bad. This song, if you can't tell by the title, which is "Rip Screw," uh, is about someone who died. Uh, the person dead is DJ Screw, a Houston producer, rapper in uh, the 90s and 80s. And he was a huge influence on Travis. And that's what gave him a psychedelic sound to his music. And uh, Travis and Sway Lee, who's also on this track again, pay homage to him in a pretty good track. I do enjoy this one. Not, uh, not as much as Sycamore or Sargazin, but it is a good track. A uh, few good samples in the song, like the beginning where it said where it samples um, Screw saying, uh, what does it say? Southside, whatever. It, there's a few things here and there. And uh, the song is pretty good. I do enjoy it. Uh, I like the uh, tribute. Yes, I do. And uh, Sway's so part is okay, I guess. Uh, also, this was written with FKI, who also will write uh, 5% Tint, which we'll get to later, and he helped on a few other production issues on the song. Now, the song overall is good, but it's not one that really stood out to me. It will probably be on my favorite list, though. Actually, that's all I have to say for Rip Screw. Rip Screw. If Bruce on my A was a Travis Scott song, but the Travis Scott and Kid Cudi... Here's like Stevie Wonder. They were all trying to stop Bruce from using the powers of God. Then that's pretty much what the song is. I'm kidding, but this song is actually very great. I love this song. Stop Trying to Be God is a great song. Now, I know by the title, you're probably like, people are yelling at Travis for doing this. It's actually about idolizing celebrities. It's about celebrity worship and how they can put them before everything else. And I do like that. I like how Travis puts that. This is close to a ballad for him. He doesn't really have much. But, um, this solid song in D. I really do enjoy this. I think this is one of my personal favorites on the record. It's got some great collabs. Um, this record does have some, but this is the best collab on the record. This has CB Wonder and Kid Cudi, which are also, like, legends. And then you got James Blake, who has a great sound in the ending. And you got some, uh, Phil Bailey production. Got Hugh Beats and Mike Dean worked on the production and the songwriting for this one. The tone of the song is cool. I do enjoy it. The music video makes me cringe sometimes, especially with the sheep talking. Yep. Yeah. But, um, good. Yeah, good song. Uh, I want to talk about the songwriting for this one, though. This song does go on for forever. It is the longest song on the on the record. It's like 5, 40 minutes or 5 minutes, 40 seconds. But the but the songwriting is a little weird. I don't enjoy most of it, especially like the 
the hmm, hmm, and then it says something. Like, the chorus is just so bland. It's just, stop trying to be God. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That's not who you are. That's literally the whole chorus. It's kind of weird, and I don't really enjoy that much. There are some good elements in the song, like palm trees, ocean, fresh air, that can break your heart, and diamonds are the wife of life. And uh, that whole thing about rollies, if you buy three, the two of them look the same. And I do enjoy that because it says that you need to get all these things to be as cool as these celebrities that you idolize. And I really do like that. Um, Stevie Wonder has uh, okay stuff in this one. I do like his harmonica solo. I'm pretty sure that's him. And um, good song. Yeah, I do enjoy this one. The party never ends. What if I told you? The party did end. Yeah, this is a trap club anthem. If you're playing it at a party or something, or at the club or whatever, yes. I don't like this one that much, but I tolerate it. I do really like Juice World's part in this, and I don't mind his music that much, but I do like his part in this. You know what's super annoying? Saying beep the club up about a thousand times. It's super annoying. That's just, yeah, that's the lowest for me. Um, yeah. The song doesn't really stick out to me. Sheck West's stuff, not bad. I actually do enjoy it. Uh, Travis's rapping isn't that bad either. And uh, this is probably the least I'm going to talk about a song. But I don't think it's the worst track on the record. There are some promising moments like production. And um, that's pretty much it for... No bystanders. One of my personal favorites. I love skeletons. Yes, I do. And I love the production. The production makes me like, it's so good. Team Impala is amazing. If you guys don't listen to him, you have to. That's going to be on my recommended uh, list on the bottom of the uh, description. But yeah, Team Impala, great music. Uh, the weekend's on here for a little bit. Uh, the song is super good. I really like it. Uh, actually, wait, sorry. Are my headphones, my headphones are around here. I'm going to take a quick re-listen. I'll catch back with you guys in two nights. I will catch back with you guys in a few minutes. Just got done listening, and it was probably the shortest song on the record. Why was it that short? The song is pretty good. I do like the beat and stuff. I already said that. But the song is so short. They should have at least extended it by a minute and a half. It, it's super short. And I'm like, this is already the end? Like, yeah. Production is not amazing on this one. Uh, it's okay. The weekend's vocals aren't great because you can barely hear them. But uh, Pharrell did the production on the song, if you didn't know. But, uh one of my favorite songs but yeah you gotta extend it you gotta get an extended cut of skeletons yes you do yeah, kanye helped write this song also it was performed on saturday night live with tame impala